We all know how bad third parties can get in Apex Legends. Today is a guide to countering, prepping, and understanding them. Nothing is going to stop a team, but you can fend them off and we'll cover listed tips that will help you succeed. If we get tons of likes, we'll go into a detailed analysis on any specific tip that you find most helpful, so let me know in the comments down below what helped you most. The focus of today will be fast tips with some gameplay in the background to help you really succeed. So tip number one, if you are close to being knocked after a close fight, top off your shields immediately over normal heals. The reason? Aim punch slash flinch makes it harder to land your shots. I have an example video in the description down below. Tip number two, after any sort of fight, you need to armor swap first and res teammates after, if you have the ability to do so. Why? Because it can be an immediate 100 armor if it is purple. Again, armor reduces flinch slash aim punch and gives you a bigger fighting chance going into your next encounter. Tip number three, got a beast squad that you're coming up with? While one teammate is rezzing, you should go for the armor swap and drop it in front of your teammate who is being rezzed. That way, once they are up, they have an additional armor and you can battery within a few seconds you're ready for the next fight. Tip number four, use your abilities. We have an endless list of them here. Lifeline can go res, then go for an armor swap to drop for a friend, drop a healing drone, and battery right after for her armor. This is tons within seconds and even if the team is trying to third party, causes them to be at a major disadvantage. Another example, Gibby should bubble right after a fight if it's out in the open. This provides cover. Mobility legends should utilize your utility, such as a jump pad, just to get away as fast as possible from a third party team trying to jump on you. Wraith, if she's up, should portal away just to res a down teammate at a different location. Pathfinder can provide a zip to go to high ground to have some situational advantage. Lobo Black Market should be dropped immediately, even though a team will see from a distance. If they're third partying, they're coming for you anyways. At least you can grab an armor swap out of that, just in case somebody died too far away from the armor swap. Or even the newest legend, Seer, if his ultimate has not been utilized, drop it down to know where that team is coming from. Watson ultimate should be utilized and dropped down just to avoid grenades from coming in during that third party. Bangalore smokes can drop down her smokes for cover and or ultimate just to stop an enemy team and prepare and buy yourself some more time. I can go endlessly here. Remember to use your legend's abilities after a fight. Remember if you waste five seconds in hesitation, that's one minute from somebody jumping on you or you getting a battery off and being at full HP in terms of armor. Tip number five, hold your ground. If you lost only one team member, you can hold your ground and try and fight. Hunker down, throw a caustic trap. I have made this mistake constantly. If you run away, you're most likely going to be shot in the back. And then if you're shot in the back, you're definitely going to lose that encounter. You can, of course, use a portal or other utility to reposition though to give yourself more strategic advantage. Let's say if you're on low ground, you know the team is coming from above. Now on the opposite spectrum, let's say you are the last one alive with one HP and the team is rolling up. Sometimes in this situation, the best play is literally just to run because you know even after you armor swap and the third party is there, it's a 3v1 encounter. Come back for the banners later and assess the situation from afar. Tip number six, different skill lobbies have different response time. Low tier lobbies have so much time to prepare for a third party. Let's break this down in terms of ranking. Remember this is kind of high level, just not exact signs in terms of timing and seconds, but it can kind of give you a ballpark on what to expect. So now bronze and silver lobbies, you sometimes nearly have 20 to 35 seconds on a potential third party. And this can also be for casual lobbies as well. Gold and plat can range from 10 to 20 seconds. Diamond through pred lobbies, five to 10 seconds. Sometimes it'll feel like less, sometimes it'll feel like more, depending on the encounter of how long it lasted when you're in a gunfight. Remember, these are approximates and they can change depending on the RNG and level of player running towards you. Don't take this for face value in terms of numbers. I want to paint a picture of how, as skill level increases, how likely third parties are to occur. Why does this happen? Because it's hands down the easiest tactic to ensure victory. Now, why are third parties easy? When you're the third party, you're ensuring you're at a health advantage because your enemy is at a loss of resources, potential teammates, and lacks positioning or even abilities. Tip number seven, when do you third party? Now you need to look at the number of participants that are still in the lobby, that are still alive. This is why you don't see a third parties always happen in competitive. If you have 14 squads and near the final zone or even the fourth zone and want to push a fight, you can safely assume you're going to be pushed right after and in even less amount of time because they're literally right on top of you and they're right next to you. You're going to lose, even if you're the best team in the world. What should you do? Now let's do this checklist. Ensure the fight is isolated to buy yourself as much time as possible, or you have utility to get in and get out, such as Wraith Portal. Check the number of players in the lobby and the size of the zone. If you see 10 squads remaining in the zone, and it's safe to assume you're not gonna be dogpiled on if it's the first zone and it hasn't been closed yet. Now another checklist, early on in pub matches, the first fight to break out would normally result in constant third parties. It's pretty safe to assume. 
if there's still 20 teams remaining and nobody has fought yet, you're probably going to be the first one to really set off the next big battle. When dropping, check who's near you. Did you drop near 10 teams or did you drop near one? Is it extremely hot or is it very safe and isolated to take this fight? Ask those questions before you go in for the third party and utilize that information from the kill feed to provide you more success. Tip number eight, duck and weave factor. When fighting, no team ever just stays in the center of the fight. They reposition throughout the building, push behind doors, use their abilities to get on the outskirts of the fight and push back in. The best example I can provide is when a wraith pushes in and then uses her tactical to move behind a rock and get away. You need to use this duck and weave practice as a team. Remember, if you have the best aim in the world, after multiple teams, there's only so much HP that you're going to have left remaining. Tip number nine, when do you push or third party? We mentioned this earlier, but I'm really capitalizing this as a tip is check the kill feed. Ask the question, did somebody go down? Did you see somebody go down from a distance? See somebody get sniped? And for somebody fighting the opposite spectrum, remember the guns that you're utilizing and the enemy's knocks show up in the kill feed. If somebody got sniped, it's safe to assume that they may not be on top of them and may be taking the fight from a distance. So maybe third party may not be the smartest decision to go on in that moment. This info, if someone tries to third party and fight as fast and clean as possible, this can also deter teams from even considering engaging you if you cleaned up the fight fast and effectively. Tip number 10, remember how I mentioned how fast a team is coming for a third party? What is the factor? If you're fighting too long, if a fight lasts for longer than 30 seconds, start checking your flank. Keep a quick eye on potentially who's running up on you. Fights at higher tier lobbies need to be cleaned up within 5 to 10 seconds, even at a pred lobby level, because it's very safe to assume somebody's going to be running up on you because they heard those gunshots. At a lower tier lobby, just as we mentioned in terms of seconds and approximates and how this all pans out, you definitely have a lot more time and room to play with. But remember, every second that you're fighting could be a second where another team is rolling up on you. Tip number 11. Set up near walls, edges of zones, or strongly positioned in areas such as a building or high ground. Let's break this down. This makes it harder for a team to third party if you have height advantage and you fought somebody on height. Never drop down in a fight, use mobility such as a wraith portal or jump pad to get right back up if you need to. If you are playing the edge of the zone, you can then gate a team and clean up the fight very quickly to avoid a third party. Then you know your back is safe. Play near massive walls, because that means that the enemy is only going to be in front of you rather than flanking from behind if you know that wall cannot be surpassed. Now, tip number 12, and the final tip, buildings. Remember, buildings are an advantage and also a disadvantage. If you play a building, you can hunker down and catch teams out of positioning. But if you let a team roll up on you and without any pressure and you're just hiding, they can circle your building and extend a fight. They can easily leave and the next team will roll up and finish the job. Remember how I mentioned that timing matters in terms of an encounter? Let's say that you're doing a fantastic job fending them off. Well, I promise you there's another team that heard the fight and perhaps they're gonna roll up on you next and then that team will third party instead once they do the duck and weave factor. Everything ties together with all these tips and it's why it's so important. Just remember to put pressure on the enemy team. Claim your spot, showcase your dominance so they do not run up on your building. If you lack damage output, that can also be a weakness. If you shoot an incoming team and you miss every single one of your shots, that's going to be a very clear sign for your enemy just to stay and fight because they can feel like they have the dominance in the situation. Practice your aim if this is a weakness because you technically have positioning advantage. If it's easier to fix this mechanic, then it's, it's harder to teach positioning than it is to teach mechanical aim. Brains over aim because aim can be taught. Position can too, but you get the point. Now, this is a ton of information. There's so much more to add here, but I want to keep this first episode of tips straight to the point to help you succeed as fast as possible. Did you find these tips helpful? Want me to demonstrate any from the list specifically? I really wanted to respect your time and hand out over this information as fast as humanly possible to you. So I wanted to have a positive experience for you guys. So let me know. Let me know in the comment section down below. How can I help? What can we dive deep into? Are one of these tips more helpful than the other? Which one should I demonstrate? Again, I wanted to be respectful of your time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.